stars in. Uh, all right, hello. We just started our regular Saturday webinar. Yes. Today is September 6th. And now we will uh, announce the year, 2014, because we already will have like overlap, so it's not only one year. So, hmm. Yeah, we started in October, so in October it will be over a year. We'll say now it's 2014 and so on. Uh, Jim, you wanted to announce language thing. Yes, um, I talked to Sabrina last night and, and uh, planning a. She's planning a language gym on Sunday at 3 p.m. New York New York time. That's Eastern Standard Time, and I I'll be there too. So anybody who wants to come to the language gym on Sunday at 3 p.m. That'd be great. Anything to add to that, Sabrina? No, that's. That's it. That's good. Very good. And um, model? Sabrina contacted me last night, and I yes. set up a time. So, thank you, Sabrina. I think it's a great idea, and I'm so glad that uh, you included me in that because um, there's a lot of things that I, I would like to share. So. Yes. So. So and now we already introduced each other, but now let me officially say hi to everybody. And we have Barbara with us. Barbara, say hi. Hi, everybody. Yeah, we know her Hello, very well from Hello. our great air sessions. Hey, um, uh, 777 is Chin. Curry Chin. Curry Chin. Hey, Gabriel. Hi, Curry Chin. How are you? Hello, my Hey, Hello, my hey Curry Chin. That's right, Curry Chin, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Hey, Justin. Justin, hey. hey. Hey guys, nice to I, got have my, I got my other phone, so if people want to ask questions, um, I'll be on and have the... Justin, no sound. I, I can know. hear Justin fine. Oh. Uh, yeah, I don't know why. Something wrong, but... Is that Gabriel? So Justin said that he has another phone. Yeah, so how no, did I, you hear Justin I did it? <laughs> yeah, no, I can't either hear it. I was just saying, I got my phone, so if other people want to text. <laughs> Maybe you two should, you, Justin, and you are having a private conversation. <laughs> There's always better. Phone. If anybody wants to ask questions, they can call Justin. Uh, Justin, do you want to uh, announce your phone number so people can come with questions and just call you, and then they, you can uh, pronounce yeah, I can. You guys can text my phone number. It's 530-435-8684. And if you have the Google Plus Hukulo chat um, rooms, you can uh, send text. You can send questions on there. I have that handy in my hand as well. Absolutely perfect. So everybody, if you want to text a question to Justin, he can read them. Very good. Next is hey Caitlin. Oh, new picture. This time yeah. it's not you. I'm, at least it's not your physical you. No. I, re no. I, rec I recommend Justin to uh, re-update the web page. Maybe then everybody can hear him. Oh, re-update the web page. What do you mean? Reload? Yeah, ah, re then we lose him. No, no. I think. Uh, oh, so people cannot hear Justin? Let's no. test it again. No, so I, can can hear hear him. Him. I, I can hear him. I can hear him. That's fine. So how Justin, come I can't one, two, hear him? Justin, say one, that two, is, three, so we can hear you. I love you all. <laughs> oh, I heard that. I heard oh. that. Good. Good. So it's just not every message is passing through, only the, the enlightened ones. <laughs> all right. Hey, uh, Mary. A good point. <laughs> how are you? Hey, Sabrina again. Nice lighting you have, the nice colors. Hello, everyone. Hey. Hello, everybody. Hey, Sarah. Hello. Uh, hey, Sean. Hello. Hey, Wendy. Hi, Wendy. What is disclosure? Good I... morning. Yes, Wendy, thank you for all your help. I got your messages. Oh, and thank you. It was nice chatting with you in email. All right. Um, does anyone has any more announcements? I have tons of things to say before we start, but I want to short say oh, short. Yes, I have one one announcement. I want to do a uh, a meeting with the welcome team on Thursday. Um, so 
everyone could give me an approximate time of what works for them? Hi, hi um, so I responded already. Okay. <laughs> Hi Jim. Hi, welcome Tim. Yes, welcome Tim. Right. Oh, we need the face. Yes, when do we? Ah, Hi. nice to meet you. Hi everyone. Oh, we also have a pillow behind us. Well, let me show you. We have a pillow. Yeah. Otherwise, it's almost identical. <laughs> nice to see you. Very nice. Uh, and um, ah, you're in America. Right? We have several people from Australia now, but not now. All right. So, um, coming back to the Welcome to the Webinar, um, it's a wonderful initiative. Yes, we have tons of new people and they kind of sleep through. Uh, if they don't get welcome too well, they kind of lose their attention and they will be lost, they lose them. So, I think Welcome Team is um, a great um, activity. I kind of keep a track of people who came and knocked on the door and then disappeared. So once in a while, I kind of write to them and say, "How are you?" and uh, reinvite them. Obviously, some of them are not suitable, but some of them seem to be a perfect match. They just kind of, if they get lost or get distracted and they, they don't get onto the webinar, then they uh, they lose them. So welcome team can sort of get them settled and uh, involved. Yeah. Normally, I, I you know I write to them and and, and, and actually and help them set up. We're getting more new countries coming and talking to us, so that's wonderful. I, I talked to someone in Slovakia and someone in Norway this week. Uh huh. So two countries that I hadn't spoken to before. All right. Um, so, I also uh, want to say that to new members, if if you post things on the web and you're not getting answers, please uh, send me send me an email in the through the website or to my email. Um, but sometimes I don't always. I'm not going every single day. So, and then it goes down the post, and unless I scroll back to that point, I don't see it. Yeah, the, I post a lot of things these days. Some nice people post also a lot of things. So many posts are just not getting read because if there is like 20 posts yeah. in a day, they just get lost. So I write to Sabrina. She is a key person who will settle you and connect to other people. Thank you for that. That's very helpful to have um, a welcome team. Uh, and there is a welcome team email. So when you write to welcome team, it gets to about seven people and um, and this way you get, will get heard and will be answered. Oh, so announcements. Uh, John Lennon's project. Um, briefly, John Lennon came through Jim about half a year ago and gave him a music and because he is scheduled to reincarnate again, he is in a hurry to publish that music, this song. It's like his message to friends and humanity. And uh, we dragged that for a long time, but finally he, John Lennon pushes and he like wakes Jim in the morning and saying, you know, where is the music? Why didn't you finish it yet? So Jim already sang everything. We have a first version. Now we need to put the correct drums mm -hmm. uh, and uh, reassemble it again. Because if you get the, you know, the first track, you get drums. Because everything else goes on the top. It has to be synced, in sync. So we have to redo it with correct drums. So first I need help to get drums. I already assembled the first. I learned the program which does it. It's an open source hydrogen program. So if anybody wants to volunteer and write drums, tracks uh, for five songs, that would be a great help. Jago, Ravi, and Slava are on the project. But if you want to help more, the more help would be the be uh, better. It's, it's involved. You have to really sit down understand the songs, understand how the album Abbey Road was played and produce your first drum track and then Jim and John Lennon will adjust it, tell us what to do, like put here that and remove here that and dampen this and brighten this and tubinum tumba and the things like that. Jim will sing you to us and then we'll reproduce that. But I can do the adjustments but creating the first track for me is just um, I I can hear some, but I miss like if it is ba bum or it's like ba bum. If that little bit of difference, I cannot hear. I'm sorry. I'm musically 
like 70% performance, not 100% performance. All right. <clears throat> and about that. Yes, go ahead. Um, also, I hear in my head what he wants pretty much whenever I'm doing the song, I hear this, the drum track as well. But he like he's, he's like a real drummer because he'll change it a little bit every time to, where he thinks that what because he goes with his feelings. But um, it's pretty much the same, but it has small changes every time I hear it. But um, I can help you to understand what he hears if you're interested. Yes. And uh, I announced, I created a button, a special button. You can see it on the top right of the um, donate button for the music project. We all owe to John for his wonderful music. Uh, we got it for free, basically. It was everywhere. He transformed the world. Uh, he was one of the key transformers who transformed the world in 60s and 70s. And his, I guess, personality transformed the world as well as music. So uh, that button is donation go directly to Jim and pay for his time because he basically he has to do a lot of different jobs just to keep afloat. If you pay, he will have more opportunity to work on that. He wouldn't be able to escape that. And right now he is, he's doing like, like one hour a week or two hours a week. And we need him to do more of that. <clears throat> He'll get there faster. <coughs> so the menu is uh, John Lennon. It's, it's Lennon menu. And there is an invitation to donate towards that. It goes directly to Jim's account. Did you get any of that sort of money already? Um, only from one person. Oh. Thank you. That one person, it's a nice start. Yeah. If you say only, you have to say, yes, we got some. Yeah. <laughs> we yes. got some. It, it was actually very nice. And I, I, I was just saying there was one person. Yes. It's, it, but it was very nice. Thank you very, very much. I, I already talked to them and thanked them personally for their, their nice don donation. Thank you. And that really helps in, any, in a lot of ways. So that's great. All right. Uh, so next, uh, we invite, we collected a lot of questions. People have questions, and some of them are on the on that post uh, on the site. This post for this webinar has questions from people. So questions typically are for Takur, <coughs> Lakesh, and Pentium are also uh, capable of answering this question. So we invite those. Takura, I guess, would be the best choice if she is available. And now I have several messages for the aliens, specifically for Takura from myself. And I want to announce them before she comes so we don't spend time of channeling. So I wouldn't tax Jim's channeling time. <clears throat> so the idea is the main problem is, as Nina said, uh, that most of the people don't remember the visits to the colonies. And if we do remember, it is more like dreams. We remember dreams, but it's very rarely like, like reality. It's rarely, very rarely physical reality. Some people do, but again, you know, uh, point to me a person who like, who is Regularly visiting and remembers everything like it was real. Maybe K Caitlin, I don't know. It's really hard to find those. So there is something wrong, and um, and that's what Nina said and others said. There is some problem with remembering. So first guess, obviously, is that there is some negative four-dimensional alien force which blocks it because human colonies projects is on, the, on their way, and they mess up the, the connection. And I can't really address that in any way. I think it's unlikely. I think we have, you know, it could be once, but when it is systemic, systematic, I think it's very unlikely because our alien friends would catch it. Second thing is <clears throat> using human analogies. Uh, it is, it could be a security breach, and possibly. Uh, it is a positive alien security force that blocks that because it doesn't pass their clearance, security clearance. So people coming from the colonies, if they start, if we start telling what we saw them, it could really uh, reveal the secrets which we learn out there. 
and I find it is very likely. So when um, this dude occur, Nina and others are surprised, maybe they are not cleared under under security department. Maybe they don't have full clearance. That for me is very likely. That what usually happens with humans, and I understand it can be translated really well to Gurkfit near security system. Uh, when uh, you know, they just kind of block certain messages. It happens all the time. We are familiar with that. You know, messages from discarnate spirits are blocked very often. They they either disconnect when they go to their own topic. Remember, I asked John Lennon if it was assassination by uh, by bad guys. It was mind control driven assassination. And John Lennon had to withdraw himself. He couldn't continue the discussion uh, because. <clears throat> There is a lot of a lot of secrets there, and they don't want to get it through channeling, and they don't want to get it otherwise otherwise directly to us. So it is likely that because we expose there to some secrets, we are not allowed to remember much. There is a blockage there, and the next possibility is that it is not four-dimensional beings to block that. It is possible that it is higher dimensional, higher spiritual, higher level spiritual blockage. <clears throat> Basically, it is possible that this is beyond dimensions, like angelic forces and gods are blocking that because it might interfere with our choices and with our free will. We are here for experience, we are here for making choices, and if you get a certain proof of a very certain proof of visits to physical colonies, then it changes the whole reality here. It changes the whole experience. We will, right now, I don't have a physical proof. It's like tiny, tiny bits. I still have choices. I have to make conscious choice. It's the main test here. We come here, we don't know anything, and we have to make conscious choice, good versus bad, four dimensions versus third dimension, and things of that sort. And if we get certain proof, the certain proof, uh, then the choice is, becomes much more obvious. It's the test is sort of is um, is not as real as as it is now. So these are possibilities. So what I suggest uh, first to create a new colony. It could be a subset of colony, but let's say just for simplicity, name it a secrets free colony, secret free colony, where we come and we're not exposed to any secrets. And then we don't, but yeah, so basically the choice would be for uh, people who don't know any secrets are much more free to come back and tell everything. Well, they might experience much less, but they would be much more open to, to speaking. That's first suggestion. And in parallel to that, it could be the same colony or different colony. It could be educational colony where people focus on telling aliens how we live here and learning how aliens live out there and no secrets out there, just cultural exchange. And it is in, a, in line with my previous suggestion of creating a galactic village for um, negative people on, or not not light workers, like regular people on Earth. So they would visit like our celebrities, our officials, would visit there and just learn a little bit about aliens and not exposed to any secrets. So that would uh, require a different structure than it is now, but that might open the door to conscious remembering of things. Also, next thing is that even if people don't remember how they visited that secret free co colony, we can channel them and this way we can learn about life there because right now everyone we speak, the humans, we spoke to three humans up there or even more and every one of them is knows the secrets and their tongue is tied, they can't say much, their mouth is closed, they have to say keep the secrets and they're prohibited from saying many things. I want to speak to someone who is completely innocent and can say anything that they learned and visited and you saw there. So I, I want that. And next thing is about the miracles, right? <clears throat> I'll tell you a joke. 
it was, I sense it was a Tibetan joke or a Zen Buddhist joke, but I learned it as Jewish joke. It doesn't really matter. It's a, a religious school, and there is a teacher. And teacher tries to explain to students what is a miracle. All right? And there is a, a mischievous student who tries to argue no matter what. So the teacher says, suppose you climb up, children, suppose you climb up on the tower, on the bell tower, and fall down, and survive. What is it? And he expects that he will say, that's a miracle. And the student said, no, it's just luck. All right. Suppose you climb again, and jump down again, and survive again. Is it a miracle? And the student said, no, it's just a coincidence. All right. And, you know, a teacher becoming mad, saying, you know, and you climb and jump, climb and jump, climb and jump many times and you survive every time. And what is that? Isn't that a miracle? And the student says, no, it's just a habit. All right? So, um, the first miracle is very important. So, if you want to break that wall of forgetfulness, the veil, just the first breaking is the most critical. And if it becomes a habit, then it kind of the flow goes. So there is a wall. You have to break it somehow. So break it in the easiest way possible. It doesn't have to be a big message. Just get some simple crisp message, like crystal room remembrance or something. But get it really consistent down here. Try to break it in any pos That's advice to aliens. Try to break that wall in the most narrow where it's easier to break and open that flood and then the information will come through. Uh, I can give examples but I think you can come up with easy examples where information is absolutely innocent but we want it like really tangible. We want like, for me it was a mark on the body. Like mark on the body is something that you can photograph. It's absolutely, absolutely unmistakable. You cannot doubt it. I have the photographs of my marks on the body. So, you know, I recommend everyone who is out there, you colonists, when you go out there, cut yourself in a specific place. Make a cross. You know, scratch yourself. And then we come back. Oh, I have a scratch. I remember, you know, I was supposed to scratch myself and now it's like like our friend Tuba Buddha. Uh, he noticed when every time they abduct him, uh, he had a mask and he has rubber bands. And he marks his rubber bands on the mask and when he sees that the mark is gone and the bands are new, then you know they replace. You know they somehow it's for him it's a sign that he has been taken. Something like that, very simple but very tangible. That's what we want. So now I invite uh, you to channel, mm -hmm. and you can comment if you like. I think there are a few small miracles that happen in the private sessions more than in the, the public ones. Exactly. Miracles are miracles here are permitted. Yeah, we, we meet them all the time, but they are not reproducible. Right. Yes, right. And that's the law. You know, I don't know if our, our alien friends know that, but we I observe all the time. Individual miracles happen all the time. Jim had phone lost, right? Yes. And then um where do you want me to and then you found it. No, I didn't find it. I found my old phone. <laughs> oh, a different one. I found a different phone. But but uh, the, this is this was by intention that my phone was lost because I went camping. <laughs> How many of you remember I went camping last weekend, and I smashed my phone. the 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 um, The glass on the phone was smashed, but it was still working perfectly, and there was no other problem except the phone was cracked. And how it got where it was to get cracked, I don't know. But within 24 hours, then the phone was completely gone. And no one has found it. And the last time I saw it was at my friend's house, and I got into my car, and I came home. And that was it. I didn't stop anywhere. I didn't go anywhere. I, I, brought, it home, I brought it home, and now it's completely gone. Okay. And... So that tells me that it was intentionally taken because... Yeah, because they don't want to overtax your eyes. Well, I don't know about that, but I know that they wouldn't have it smashed and disappear within 24 hours or 36 hours, whatever it was. So it tell was... about the drawer. The what? Jumping drawer. Drawer. Drawer? 
uh, earthquake in your house. Oh, 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 and this morning, before our <laughs> webinar, I was online looking at some to see if anybody wrote anything to me, and I was sitting at my desk, and the desk started to move and rattle really badly this morning. I mean, there was someone there wanting to talk to me, obviously, because nothing else was moving in the house. It was like the desk was having an earthquake by itself. So I'm going, who's there? What is the message? It didn't frighten me at all, but I, I, I definitely knew that there was an entity there because my desk was jumping up and down, and I'm going, oh, okay, that's just not right. <laughs> That's not that's not normal. So, um, but no one said anything. But that was the desk. Did they answer you? No, but that was the desk where I found the other phone that I'm using. So I'm thinking that they were trying to tell me that something about the phone. I'm I'm thinking that they were, they're telling me something about the phone. But I but they did make the desk jump up and down and rattle and everything in my and I have a lamp on top of the desk, so I like jumped up and grabbed the lamp because I didn't want it to fall. So, <laughs> um, so little miracles happen now and then, but you know, reproducible miracles in this reality are prohibited. It's a major law. You you can't have a reproducible miracle. But I'm not sure if it was an alien, a spirit. I don't know. It didn't identify itself. So, but it did happen this morning, and it lasted for about thirty seconds. And nothing else in the house was shaking, just the desk. So it, the desk was just jumping up and down. So um, don't know what that means. Or does anybody have a uh, does anybody have a uh, message for me from that? Yeah, you, you can use an app called Find My iPhone, and then you might find it. Oh well, I w I got I found an old phone. Uh, my old phone, the one before this one, so uh, I may, I think I'm able to use that. I have a SIM card for it, so Max is going to put that in for me after this, the channeling session, webinar. But let's, let's start the channeling. Yes. Hey, Tucker, welcome. Namaste. Namaste. One moment. Oh, that is better. How are you today? I am well. We have full audience today. People are, have questions. Very good. What's I know new? there are many questions. I have already told many that their implants have been updated to teleport them directly to the colonies. This is at 97% accuracy. When it released, when it raises to 99.9% .9 accuracy, we will then begin transport. Is there any other questions out there? I know this hello, is... Hello, Tucker. Sabrina, hello. How are you? Um, we would um, go with Sarah first. Sarah. Hello, Sarah. 
Hello, Tukar. How are you? I am well. Thank you. How are you? Good. Doing well. Thank you. Um, I was asking a question for Pegasus. Yes, Pegasus. Yes, his question is, what, <laughs> what is the percentage of the hybridization for mating last time you said it was 78%? It is still in that area. It has mm -hmm. not really changed that. There are things that have to happen before that percentage will go up. <laughs> this time yet. 78% remains the, the most accurate number. Thank you very much. That's all I had at the moment. Okay. Um, now, Wendy? Yes. Yes, hi, Chikur. Wendy, hello. I am learning the language better, and it is getting easier now to use the translator. Yes, you do very well. Thank you very much. Thank you, Wendy. I'm curious as to what, if any, assistance the Earth may be in need of right now, and if there's anything that I or we may do to collectively to assist in some of this volcanic activity. This is something that only we can work on, and your scientific community is also aware of. They are actually helping us in some ways. I cannot tell you how, but I can tell you that Iceland, Japan, and especially the mid and southern portions of California are the most... volatile at this point. Yes, there is you. also a place in South America that is has some volatility, but it is not as great. And so they are not working there as much. I see. Are, are you pleased with our progress on the colonies? Your your progress is always measured on the colonies. Therefore, I know that you have had some ups and downs, but the average colony vibrational person is about 3.9, which is higher than it was six months ago at 3.77. Thank you. We are making progress. Are we all there together working? Yes, you are working together. The society, the community that you have together helps keep vibrations higher. You use your humor and your knowledge and your understanding and love to lift each other up, which is the way it should be. Not there are right. some that have fallen away because they were discouraged and things did not resonate well, and there was reasons for that. But they will be back. Yes, I understand. Do we then meet among ourselves prior to going to the colonies as well as after yes. we return? Yes, and you share things that you do not know that you learned at the colonies, but you did and others will resonate with it because they learned it at the same time or in a similar period of time and that's why many things resonate with you as a community do you understand that we have taught you some things that resonate as a community yes thank you for that verification I, I, I thought so thank you very much I you're appreciate welcome. that information you're welcome your community is probably one of the most advanced communities because of the way that it is set up. You understand, many other of the channelers do not give opportunity for community, whereas this, commu this is a co true community where like thoughts can be shared. And this brings up the vibration of this community faster than it would anywhere else because many times 
the channeler is the only one that is in contact with the person and there's no they have to share that information with the people around them in their three-dimensional space but they do not share it with internet do you understand yes yes thank you very much and but there are others that share in other ways such as the evolution I, what is it the name of it Rob Goff. Evolution Network. Yes, the his community is different as well because he has the radio programs that yes. set out and talk to the community as well. However, they do not connect like they do here. Yes, thank you. Enlightenment. That's what it is. Okay. I just, it is a great network. Yes. Caitlin. Um, hi, Decker. Caitlin, how are you? I'm very well. How are you? I am well. Thank you. Um, my question was, I often get touched on the, the foot yes. by an entity or maybe multiple entities. What is the reason for them touching me, and who is touching me? The reason for the touching on the feet. Do they touch in more than one spot? It's usually both of the feet and occasionally different places on my body. Exactly. This, let me tell you why the foot is important. There is activations on the feet in reflexology for all parts of the body, including the brain. Okay. Therefore, they are activating certain things within you, perhaps even subconscious memories and even health issues that they will be able to help by just touching your feet. Do you understand that? Yes. Now, the people that are doing this are your guides. You have spirit guides and you have also alien guides that are present with you constantly. The spirit guides and the alien guides are in touch with each other which is unusual. Usually they are separate but in this case they connect and they do help you when there are needs. Mostly it is for mental needs for you to be understanding of what is happening. You have three third dimensional ideas about fourth dimensional thoughts. Does that make sense to you? <laughs> yeah. This is how they are helping you. Your third dimension is very important. Your third dim density is very important because this is where you move up through to the fourth dimension. Somehow you have managed to mix the two together quite effectively so that they can speak to your fourth dimension through your third dimension. Now, remain grounded. You have a tendency to move away from your grounding and get caught up in the fourth dimensional thoughts. Most of the time when they touch your feet, they're trying to bring you into a grounded situation where you can think about the fourth dimensional and the third dimensional in the proper channel of ideas. Do you understand? Yes. Therefore, with you, you are a very special person, and you know that, you have been told that. So your connection with aliens is much greater in some senses. But stay grounded. This is what they're trying to help you with. To stay grounded so that fourth dimensional information is correct and not mixed with third dimensional uh, defects in, in a way. So that fourth dimensional energy must be purer as you're accepting it. Okay. Um, is there any names or species of yes. these? You have actually several species around you, but not all at once. Okay. You have Yugil, you do, and you have Pleiadian, and there is the occasional Octorian. You have the elves, or or I'm not sure, fairies and elves and things of that nature around you as well. You are aware of that, correct? 
Yes. Um, I thought my cat was sick, but I, I guess that they are playing with him. <laughs> Um, I actually, they've given your cat an awareness of them so that it won't be upset when it, they are there. Your cat is aware of all species that visit you. Your cat is aware of all spirits that visit you. And your cat is also now highly intellectual among cats. Oh. Do you understand that? There is, do you notice a slight change in his or her personality? Well... Yeah, I mean, I was just really upset about it because I thought he was sick, and I, I Googled it, and they said it was a brain problem. And I just started crying because I thought he was actually going to die or something. And it just you will not me. die because the brain problem is an IQ problem. He is becoming more aware. Oh, that's lovely. Wow. <laughs> Give him a chance to adjust. It is rather difficult. Now, he is not going to be able to talk or do things of that nature. <laughs> but he will be able to understand why there are aliens around you and some of the things that they are doing. So he is aware and he will not be frightened. Yeah, um, I noticed that as well. He's Sometimes he seems um, afraid, but he always helps me. So Yes, you know? now he will not seem as frightened. Yes, thank you, Takur. Thank you You're so welcome. much. Hello, Takur. This is Sabrina. Sabrina, hello. Um, I have a question. Um, last Saturday, um, I went to see the movie Lucy. Ah, yes. And had an interesting event that day and the day before. Um. And I was wondering if you could speak to it a little bit, and who was the entity, and where was she from? Tell me a little bit about the, your situation. Okay. I am not getting a clear picture. I, re I am seeing the movie Lucy playing in your mind, so that is all I can see right now. Okay. Um, and then... I started, I guess, almost to leave my body. I don't know. It, it, like, reality became pliable. Yes. And, uh, and then uh, an entity came in, and then uh, <laughs> I guess it was making a lot of comments. Um, and then I couldn't speak English for a while. <laughs> yes. Oh. Um, the comments that we're making. Did you find them disturbing? No, no. Could have you found them disturbing? Could have found them disturbing? Um, in what sense? Were they trying to tell you something that you did not know? Um, actually. I don't think so because I part of me knew uh, that that I knew that that I knew yes. some some of the things in the movie were not true to yes. how it is. This is this is the message that you that you trust your resonation towards certain things. And this is important for you because sometimes you do not always trust your resonation. You feel you go into yourself and question it. However, your resonation is very strong and true. Always trust it. And this is what the voice was trying to re-emphasize to you. Because this resonation that you are feeling toward that movie, you are correct. Many things or not many things, but I would say, a gr well, I would say many things. Many things in the movie were not correct, but it was for entertainment only. Okay, yeah. I, I, I thought so, um, but then uh, I, I was having problems then speaking English again after that, and then he went outside and did some kind of ritual or something. 
in my backyard. Yes, there, the ritual is very plain. The ritual tells me that they were trying to uh, cleanse out some of those thoughts that actually attached to you that were not quite true. And actually, after that ritual, you were able to see the movie for actually what it was entertainment and that the things that resonated with you to be true were actually true and the things that resonated with you to be false were actually false okay okay and that, they just gave you clarity because you, they didn't want the confusion oh I see okay. because it's important that you as a leader stay focused on what the true resonation of the thoughts were it was for entertainment, but there was some truth in it in places. Yes, yes, and I and I could see that, and I could see also the limitations within the movie itself. Yes, but it yes. was for entertainment. It was some one person's idea of what could happen in that situation. That situation was improbable, not impossible. But ninety nine percent improbable. Okay, um, and can you tell me which species um, was it that? That was a Syrian. Okay. Syrians are very light and very enlightened. Therefore, they felt concern and had to make a concerted effort to help you with that. They felt it was needed because of your position in the universe and on the earth. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yes, it makes sense to me. Now that I got through the thoughts of the movie and moved past that, I can see what happened, yes. <laughs> yes. It was it was actually a bit comical <laughs> in retrospect because uh, C basically had to get me back to yes. English. Yes was interesting that you would move that far out. But that is how sensitive you are to resonations. They just wanted to clear that up and help you resonate exactly true. Okay. But I was I was shifting, right? Was I shifting? Yes. Um, there, you had an interdimensional shift, which was also a concern for them. So that I wasn't going to mention that, but since you mentioned it, I will tell you that. Yeah, yeah, because I, I felt it because I had to ground myself because um, I, I felt myself shifting during the movie. Yes, you were shifting. You had an interdimensional shift during a time of high resonance, resonation. Yes, yes. Yeah, I could feel that. Yes. Um, my and other... Have, the reason why you had the interdimensional shift was you was actually experienced one of those things that Lucy experienced in the movie and therefore your your resonation with it was very strong. Yes. That's what I thought also. That that's what was happening. Right. Yes. Okay. Um I have one more question. Um do you know who I think this is correct the spelling I'm not sure. Lapidius, Lapidius. Lapidius. Yes, master of the realms. Lapidius. He goes by other names, but master of the realm is Lapatusi. But he calls himself Lapidius to you, I guess. Lapatusi is a gatekeeper, basically. Um. He is master of the gate. The realms are controlled in other ways, but yes, he can be considered a master of sorts. His mastery of the realms is that he can contact anyone at will in the realms, and he can also bring them to a, a certain place in reality and time space. Other than that, okay. there are some things that are permitted, not permitted for him. The word not is 
not the word I want to use. It is unprohibited for him. I am not sure I'm using the right word. Um. He is not permitted to do certain things within the realm, but his placement in the realm is very important as a gatekeeper and a keeper of safety in many ways. Okay, all right. And um, there was also Ar Archeum, Controller of Time. Ar I cannot speak of him. Okay. All right, but he does he does exist. Time does not exist in many okay. ways. But he exists as a manipulator of of space which controls time. Oh. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um now uh, Gabriel. Thank you, Takar. Appreciate it. No problem. Hello, Takar. It's Gabriel here. Gabriel, how are you? You said that I was very unique on the colony. Can you explain more? Mm -hmm. oh. I'm about my I can... what? Uh, can you speak? tell me more? It's become obvious to many. I cannot tell you more about uniqueness than what uniqueness is. You see, as you become part of the colony, as you move through the relationships and gain community with many, they will see your uniqueness, but I cannot explain it to you because if I do, it will change the route that you take to show them. Okay. Do you have anything else to share to me? About, I'm wondering how can we but, know that we are going to the colonies before we go? We are developing something now because it must be given to you ahead of time to go in real time. That is part of the, the, the 3% that we have not figured out yet, at least not in a perfect way. But what I was saying before to you is do not change. Continue to be who you are. Move through your relationships the way you should. And do not question your uniqueness. It will be seen and it will be used in the future. If I should tell you more, it would change how you would move. Okay. Is there anything else you want to share to me? Not at this time. Thank you for the messages. You are so welcome. There will be more messages for you in time. This, I will. This, but you know what I'm saying. This third density depends on it. Okay. Justin, you are next. Guru Yakasha to her. Yukasha ta fatin fier kantra. Eriran for me. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Uh, the question I have in this moment, or I feel you confirmed already the question that I typed out to Sabrina and the last statement you made. Is this correct? Yes. This feels correct? Yes. Okay. So, are there any other tips that you may impart not only to myself but to the Hukula family that can help, that can assist in the connection and the building of these vortexes um, for the help of getting them to their other aspects or to their colonies um, and and also in, in the assistance of the building of the energies or the ideas to 
spring from to build the memories of the physical trips and the holographic astral trips. Yes, there are things. We have learned that vigilance, once you are within the colonies, do does help, which means that you are really wanting to take these memories back. Some of you are afraid to take the memory back with you because it will change your perception of this reality. Not so. Your reality there is in a different density when you go holographically than it is here. Do you understand? So when you have someone in close proximity to you that has been to the colonies, which you do have someone very close to you that's been there, be speak to each other and become aware of what things that are true for both of you. So that when you go back to the colony, you may find that as a trigger for memories. Does that make sense to you? Yes. The, the, I'm waking up in the mornings, every morning, with a sense of complete knowingness of, of a visit to the colonies, as well as not only holographic aspects of myself, but also other alien aspect, universal aspects of myself yeah. in the colonies, one, two, three, four, and five, as well as the GCC at all times for me to have access to. I have complete knowingness in this idea. Is there any new ideas or energies that you would be willing or able to send and that I would be able to let me, let me, you are s someone who is moving very quickly. I would, I would ask you to slow down just slightly so that you can absorb some of the energy that goes with the knowledge. Does this make sense to you? Yes. You are moving very, very quickly. And this is a good thing. I do not... I do not want you to really slow down except for some of the energy that that is in your motion has not absorbed into you. So take a moment and ask for that energy to absorb into you so that you may even move faster in the future. Do you understand? Now, you are one of great knowledge and absorbing that knowledge quickly. So therefore, the triggers that you will find in the colonies will be emotional as well. You are highly emotional and find emotional triggers there as well. There are certain people there that will cause certain emotions within you. You will meet me again. And when you meet me again, a trigger will be given to you that will give you more knowledge and bring back more understanding. Yes, I see it in this moment to occur. Yeah. You Thank are, you. you are, you are, yes. And really? the, the things that you want confirmed will all be confirmed with you. And you have met many confirmations already. But stay in third dimension. Stay grounded. Because to leave the third dimension completely would be harmful for you. Um, you mentioned fifth colony. Can you both explain what it is? Fifth colony is an entertainment colony. We found that if people are entertained or have the entertainment and talents, they can also share it with the world. And through the world, in their, enter in their performances, can actually bring subliminal messages to mankind to not fear the first contact. Does that make sense to you? Uh, makes perfect sense. In fact, Max, you were the one that suggested celebrities and stars and things of this nature to come to the colonies and be 
interacting with the earth with universal messages, as we would say. So this is the beginning of that process. I also suggested that uh, publishing the videos of stand-up comedians from the colonies to the earth might break the censorship uh, barriers. I would recommend now, it was my suggestion which I wanted to pronounce, to bring to the colonies some of the YouTubers who have more than a million subscribers. There is tons of them, and some of them are enlightened. This would help the Colony 3 and Colony 5 to break the barriers and get you know, a flow going to the YouTube. Maybe very benign, but at least make sure that you can publish things <laughs> freely and attract users and likes uh, seamlessly. Everything in its own time. <clears throat> There is reasons why things grow the way they do. For stability, things grow slowly so that you can absorb the energy around you. There is much energy around human colony to absorb, and you must absorb it before you can move to the next level. Do you understand? Of course, yes. And so as you are absorbing this energy, you are attracting others to come and join you in your group in your community and this comes not as quickly as you might think but it will come in the way that it is supposed to yes I, I'm afraid you misinterpreted my suggestion I didn't suggest to bring millions of users to human colony site because it will overwhelm us but I suggested to bring YouTubers who already have the knowledge and experience of managing millions of users to the human colony up there to help Colony 3 and Colony 5 just to bring the knowledge there. Yes. And I said everything in its own time and I w was referring to exact that thought. All right. Uh, another question I had, you, uh, Justin, you mentioned GCC Colony. What is that? Justin. You were talking to Justin. Oh, Takeru, if you can answer him. He mentioned GCC colony. JC. Would you like to explain that, Justin? <clears throat> the idea of the G the Glatrix Comedy Club is the is an idea that I was grateful and appreciative to hear. Um, Brother Dan, also known as Mpaku and Rowie, and Brother Prana and a few others, um, uh, had the idea of the of the new colony room, the forest room, if you will, yes. as well as a stand-up comedy it, improv um, performance arts, sports, entertainment, just what Takur was speaking of in the moment of the subconscious messages that we get when we are inspired by watching different artists um, doing their individual expressions of you know the energies they're channeling in the moment and and enhance using these energies to to enhance their performances and to reflect these energies back and and a love in an unconditionally highest vibrational, um, all the highest vibrational positive aspects of the white gold light that is source energy. Yes, the idea of comic interaction has sparked some different thoughts within the galactic community. The comedy or sense of humor that Earthlings have has been lost to some species, and they find it unnecessary. However, Octorian leadership has decided that this is definitely helpful in releasing certain chemicals into the body that are necessary for ascension and for vibrational rays. 
you understand that. So it will happen. It will happen. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you, Takur. I, I did have some concerns also, so I'm, I'm glad you spoke of that. What were Thank your you. concerns? Um, um, being funny without being disrespectful. Yes, it can help. There is ways to be funny without being disrespectful. There are ways of being funny and disrespectful. There are ways of being vulgar and funny. You must decide what resonates with you and what resonates with your ascension and with your higher vibration. We find that without being vulgar, you can be very funny. Vulgarity has a temptation to spark a negative meaning within the people's minds and therefore takes them down to a lower thought level with words that make no sense or do not sound even correct with language such as profanity does this make sense to you yes because some of the words I used in profanity that. are used as verbs nouns adjectives adverbs all at once. They can be used in any way, shape, or form and yet they have vulgar meanings in almost every sense. Yeah. I, you do not need this to, for your ascension but to find the purity of human flaws and funny anecdotes is very acceptable and encouraged. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Was I yes. clear? So for our own... Um... And it does not mean that you cannot occasionally use a vulgar word. One right. or two words for emphasis does not bring the vibration down. But to be in constant use of profanity or or words that mean negative things to humanity is not acceptable. Yes, because I understand what you're saying, because um, sometimes it's actually um, needed for the context of what's being said, but yeah. using I it understand. all the time, yes. But it is not a constant use. Right. I especially enjoy what Jim also enjoys the ass ended master. <laughs> <laughs> I find entertaining work. <laughs> I find that to be very clever. Yes. Yes, that was Prana. <laughs> very clever. <laughs> because there are some that fit that description and it's so it is appropriate and it does not bring down your vibration because you do not see it as a vulgarity. Right. Uh, um, it, it, in that sense, I'm curious about um, what actually Prana is doing when he's when he creates all these different characters, it almost seems like he's channeling. In a sense, he is. He is channeling the subconscious of that being within him, that the experience that has laid in his subconscious. Do you understand? He experiences them, and they go to his subconscious, and he can revitalize their essence. Oh. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Caitlin had another question. Yes. Um, my question was about two beings that gave me their names. One I know is definitely fairy. The other one is an elven male, I think. Yes. Um, the male that is an elf, Norohim. And 
Yes. Why do they have so many ends? That's what I'm really wondering. But um, the fairy is Nickname, and there's they sound so similar. The names that I'm getting. So um, could you briefly describe who they are? Nurahim. Nurahim is a actually a holy person in the elven world. Mm. He is a high spiritual guide. And the other is his mate. The fairy? Yes. So it's is it a, it's a male fairy, isn't it? It's a male fairy, yes. It's really <laughs> it's small. <laughs> it's really small. They are very small, yes. Like a like one like, is the holy man near him. Okay, like a like a sylph or a sprite. That's because I remember he was playing with my cat. I saw that. Yes. He's wearing like He's a very small. Yeah. He is an elven figure. Yes. I see. So, do the fairies enjoy playing with my cat or something? They like jumping on him. I know that. Well, you have to understand the. The fairy and elf realm are all very nature-oriented. Mm -hmm. They love animals, trees, plants, stones, water, sky. They are very attuned to the earth. You understand? And yes. therefore your cat would be a wonderful joy for them, seeing as now it has a greater intellect as well. So they would be able to interact in a very playful way. I see. Okay, so and playfulness yeah. among elves is month is part of their culture. You must play at least a portion of the day, otherwise you have not taken care of your deeds or chores. Because to them playfulness is necessary and you must do it. So the, the wait, the elves on era, do they do that? They seem so Assertive, it's so serious. They like they want to chop a head off, kind of. The ones that I've encountered, they have, at least. They have their serious side, but they they have their playful side as well. Their protocol with you is to be serious and to win your respect. But after you get to know them, after a while, they will show you their playful side. But they have not done that yet. Mhm. Mm yeah. Um. Also. Oh God, I'm asking so many questions. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, problematic. I'm just, I'm just so curious because I feel the Fae are on my property. They live there. Um, there are many places to live on your property. Yes. Yeah, like the the front of my yard. I, there's this like bush, like, and I feel like there's like a village or of some sort there, and maybe that's how they come in my room through my window. And around, yes, there are several places actually, and in around the side, there is a place around the side of your home that they also have some homes. Where the well is, kind of. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, I kind of want to save some of the their habitats because my mom and dad want to take down some of the bushes. I don't want them to get angry. <laughs> they will not be angry with you. Okay. Because you are resonating with them as being on their side. You are letting them know that it is not your idea. They only ask that you would try to preserve <laughs> at all costs what is theirs. Okay. Um, so like plants, certain plants and stuff? I mean there are certain plants that they are ask them, they will tell you. Okay. Um, thank you. Yes. Um, Barbara, do you want to oh. go with your questions? All right. Yeah, just for everybody else. Yes, Barbara. Oh. Yeah. Um the reptilian that is hanging around my Yes. Wow. Is it the same one that I saw a couple of times? Yes. And is, what is the reason for him? He is 
he has been with you many years. Okay. So he is an observer of the things you do and your animals as well. They see him as well. So, but he is not in, you are not in any danger at this time. If you were, I would have someone contact you. Okay. But yes, he is an observer for his kind. Okay. And he will eventually make himself known to you if permitted. I wish he would. You have seen him on more than one occasion. And this is was not acceptable at first, but now they know that you have seen him, and so it has been permitted that he stay as far away from visibility as possible. But if you see him, it is not dangerous. Midman, my vibration. I'm just curious to see if it's still at four point seven. Your vibration is actually dropped a little bit. Mm -hmm. It is dropped to 4.6, but that is not terrible. You still are high. There are some physical and mental things that are holding you back from moving further, and they have actually caused a slight depression in your being. We can speak of that later. Okay. And have I visited the colonies yet? Yes, you have. Yes. You have visited Colony 2 and Colony 1. Colony 2 is for health and diet and things of this nature, exercise. And Colony 1, you are working on your telepathic abilities. Okay. Is there anything else that you need to tell me or I need to know? You will be coming back to the colonies shortly. You have scheduled a two more visits, actually, at this time perhaps more in the future. Okay. And then I have a question for my sister. She wanted me to ask if that's okay? Yes. She just wants to know if she'll be moving from Durango to, to New York or moving out of Durango, Colorado. There is a good possibility. Okay, there are decisions to be made, though, before that will be confirmed. But I believe that as, as her thought pattern is moving at this time, she will. She wants to move. Thank you, Takara. Yeah. Um, there is one last. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah. There is oh, one yeah. last comment right. from Sean. That's all. Sean, welcome, Sean. Hello, Takara. I just want to say my uh, love for you. That's it. I love you as well. You are very loving to me and to those around me. I appreciate all your loving thoughts. You you speak highly of us always. And for that I give you many thanks. And we give you some messages that you, you receive, I hope. But your gratitude and love toward us is well acknowledged among many. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to jump with a uh, one question. Uh, Michael, uh, my Michael, um, uh, every day he uh, complains that he has a sad waves of sad feeling, like depression, like sad feelings. Do you know what's happening? I will check. All right. The ka shata murakata ota ifs gambia oratva merahingya ye. I will speak to you privately. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, we had several questions, like about five, seven questions on the post on the website for this webinar. Has anybody read them already? I can read them. I, I just yeah, wonder if yeah. I, I possibly can do that. Okay. Yes. Oh, um, I can read them if you like, Matt. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, call, call. Um. Uh, let's see. Rani's question, although I understand, is uh, let's see. I want to know any more news on the film from Beyond, and also they mentioned or that there was some talk about them informing us each time before we go to the to the colonies. Is this still a plan for them? 
yes, if you're going to be going to the colonies physically for in time, um, real time visitation, you will have to know ahead of time. For holographic visitations, there is no need for you to be uh, uh, notified. However, when it does come that there will be real-time transportations in the future, there must be some communication ahead of time. We are working on what that communication should be and how it should be given. Also, um, mm -hmm. moving forward in the colonies, we're at 97% at that, of that rate. And it must be 99.9 .9 before we'll even start. There's mm -hmm. It has been decided there would be always some relativity for error due to different phenomena in the atmosphere or within the actual physiology of the person. So 100% would not be able to be achieved. But we believe 99.9% .9 is achievable. Okay, and uh, speaking to that, to Kurt, there is a confusion about how um, when we do a physical visit, would it be whatever time elapses here is what time elapses over there? That is correct. So if you leave your home for one hour, you will be in the colony for one hour Earth time. This is the only way you can come in the flesh is to use earth time you must stay in earth time earth reality and <clears throat> earth density do you understand yes otherwise you would be unable to think or react to stimulus that we give you Okay, uh, Liney had a question about hybrids, and as we are given alien infusions, do they help us to understand and help connect more to the others um, that have the same alien infusion? It does help you connect to them in some ways. Because your chakras align slightly differently, there is a different element to your chakra because as you know, when you become a hybrid of anything, they, they affect all parts of the body, mind, spirit, and soul in some ways. Except for the soul is not as much affected. And let me tell you why. Because that is what you were incarnated as. But the soul realizes the changes of the body, mind, spirit, and emotion. I see. Um, then there was, I don't know if, have you ever spoken with Rani? Um, she had a question about her hybrid, if she's a hybrid, and I what species and percentage. I spoke to her yesterday, I believe. Okay. All right. Um, and uh, the last question here was from... Well, Justin last week had asked about dark and the seeing dark. energies, but he would be best to ask that. And I don't. The dark, there is many kinds of darkness, as you know. I am not sure which dark you are sensing or which ones you can see. Um, Justin, would you like to ask the question in the way that you intended? Well, it was more of a question that was put out by Liney, if I remember correctly. It was one that <clears throat> she heard from last week's webinar, I believe. Um, I think it was <clears throat> related to, um, I'm able to perceive the, um, the fourth dimensional and higher vibrational energies. Yeah. Um, in, in the dark now as well as the light and actually at night I'm able to perceive it a little uh, I may I feel I see it better and at night and I'm also feeling this knowing feeling that <clears throat> I'm able uh, I see the fourth energy um, vibrations with my left eye more and then when I accumulate the energies in this eye um, with <clears throat> okay pardon me 
using the vision that I receive in the third eye in the form of energy or um, visions, I use this for energy to send down to my from my third eye to my left eye, and then I open up my right eye to project this energy out so as to be able to project the energy that I'm seeing and being able to project it and see it. And then when I start building this image from my third eye, then I'm able to open up the left eye again and perceive the <clears throat> fourth dimensional and higher vibrational energies yes. uh, more clearly after this. Yes. And the yeah. more excitement and the more... Um, unconditional source, high vibrational, positive aspect, energy of source, and infinite gratitude and infinite appreciation with just the highest excitement, to, the more it manifests into fullness. Yes. Do you understand the process? Yes. Very good. And did you have a question, or was that just, did you just want to tell us? This, this was, I think this was... I feel I'm feeling this is the clarification that Caroline Orlani was looking for for this process. Let me add to this what he is saying right now. He is bringing in through the left side, which is the female side, the heart side, the heart chakra side, and releasing through the male side, which is his intellect side and his uh side for transmitting. You understand? Yes. yes. Therefore, you are you have been able to do this because of the third eye opening to the point that you were able to perceive the different sides of of the uh, extra sensory. Do you understand? Yes. Your third eye is more open than most. Let me explain. There has been drug use in your past. I do hope you do not mind if I share that. I do not mind at all. I'm an open book. I'm completely open and honest. The reason why your third eye opened during some of this drug use was because it was intentioned by your subconscious to do so. And it, you wanted to, you have always been searching for enlightenment all your life. And therefore, this intention from your subconscious with that particular use opened your third eye in a way that was very different, in a different way, but in a very conscious way. Do you understand? Yes, thank you very much for <clears throat> the confirmation and clarification, the clarity of <clears throat> complete clarity of the spiritual <clears throat> enlightenment. You have never told me about anything of that nature, so that is something that I was not sure I could share, but I was pretty sure I could. You can share anything. I'm completely open. Anyone that wants to know anything about me, I there's nothing but to hide. I, I mean, thought I mean, others no would be benefited by this awareness of intention because if it was purely recreational, it would not have had the same effect. The same is done with Indians in your great past, who are actually aliens. Which aliens? That, they must tell you. Mm -hmm. The Hopi. Is there any more questions? Uh, we have uh, Sean and Wendy and uh, Sarah and Mary and Brian who never spoke, but I believe they would spoke, speak if invited. Yes. I welcome all questions. Takur, to, to may I speak? Yes, Brian. Yes, my question real quick is um, the Syrian civilizations. Um, yeah. Will they be joining Grip Foot Near in the future? There is a possibility, but not in the near future. There is something happening that keeps us apart in our thought 
final processes. They are close to fifth density and they are very enlightened. We feel we are enlightened as well and we do not understand some of their concepts. When we do understand those concepts, then we will definitely align. Thank you, Tukur. Much love. Much love, Brian. I understand why you asked that question. And many blessings for asking it. Well, Wendy, would you like to speak? Sean? Sarah? Yes, Tukur, I have a question. Yes. Uh, why can't I remember any of the contacts I have with extraterrestrial beings when I am in my dream state? You will be able to. At this time, we are working with you in other ways. Your grounding is necessary to a, a smaller point at this point. You have grounded some, but you need to ground a little bit more, be, to bring that fourth dimensional energy into alignment with your conscious and subconscious state. But we are helping you with that. Thank you for your help. You have much fourth dimensional energy, Sean. It's, and that is why we are helping you to ground more. There is no one around you to help you. Perhaps people in the colony will help you ground as well. But your fourth dimensional energy is very high. Yes, and he's also very wise when he chooses to speak. Yes, he is very bright. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Continue, Much love. Yes, continue to ground yourself. Bring yourself into third density. Walk upon Mother Earth in your bare feet. Connect to the Earth. Connect to those things that are third density so that you may be pulled up through third density to the fourth and you'll be able to understand more things and be able to remember more things. To occur is my hybrid child, did it is it born yet? Very shortly. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, Lakesh asked me if I wanted an extraterrestrial cat in a sense. I remember. It is unfortunate that we are not permitted to give you that request. <laughs> he was out of line to even suggest it. <laughs> But, to help you with your question, <laughs> you may get a cat, and we may help you with it in some ways, but it will not be the, <clears throat> the animal that Lakash is speaking of. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We got um, Noha just joined, and I... Yes, go ahead, go ahead Noha. Hello, Tukur. Hello, Max and everybody. Hello. Good to see you again. Hello. Uh, nice uh, to see you. Tukur, uh, I need to know about my... Uh, you told me I'll be, I'll be having some new children. Have they arrived? Or not yet? Not quite yet. But sure. I have the names ready. Great. Them? I got the names anyways ready. Yes. Okay? I remember. Two, uh, great. Uh, the second question. Yes. Uh, have I been to E4? Colony 4? Yeah. The channeling colony? Exactly. Yes, you have been there once. I need to go more? I need to yes, there are, go. we would like to work with you more on colony 1 first before okay. we send you back to 4. We did okay. send you to 4 to get you to understand a few things about channeling that you weren't aware of and now back to channel to Colony 1 where we would like to work on your telepathy and <laughs> work on the enhancement of your intentions, etc. Okay. The last uh, question. 
Yes. Now uh, the galactic languages has becoming so vast. Okay, it's more yes. than than the entities we know, the hybrid entities. So when a first contact happens, are we going to meet them with this all galactic languages that we are having? You will be able to share with everyone the galactic languages that you have and let them know that you are connected to the galaxy. Right. Thank you and love you so much. Love you very much. I am hoping all is well and that your new job is going fine. To occur, in terms of the galactic languages, are we going to be able to um, know what we're saying anytime soon or there is, is I am training Jim the Lyran language and during your next language is it called Jim your language yes. Jim he will teach you some of the words from the Lyran language okay thank you uh, we have Stephen joining us. Uh, Wendy didn't ask any questions, and Mary didn't ask. So Stephen, Mary, and Wendy, go ahead. Hello, mm -hmm. sir. Yes. Uh, how are you? I am well. Sweet. Um, I was just wondering if there's any changes in my uh, my child, and also my Pleiadian uh, dad. I was just wondering uh, why. Uh, there, I had, I didn't uh, have like my hybrid or anything. Uh, was told any my uh, had any Pleiadian in me. I was kind of curious as to is that hidden or is it just not told yet? It is not told yet. Okay. But you are aware of many things going on with you, and one thing must happen at a time. And when that finishes, another will happen as well. Do you understand? Uh, yes, thank you. And we'll let that assimilate, and uh, it will happen as it happens. And, and I will speak to you, and you will know all things about it. All righty, thank you. And is the oh. is my child still in incubation, or is it yes. is the process? Actually, your child is a, yes in in mid incubation period. Sweet, thank you. There are many children in the incubation at this time. So some of you have been aware of your children. We will try to contact you, others of you who have hybrid children in incubation. Liney, you have a child in incubation, period. Oh, wow. How's my daughter Fenza doing? Your daughter Fenza is doing well. And she is happy. Does she know that I think about her? She knows that you even speak to her. You speak to her and she hears you. And if you feel something, a resonation within you, she is speaking back. She is not fully in a control of her languages yet, but she will be shortly. Will I get a chance to see her? Yes. You will come to her holographically and you will meet. To Eva. Kurt, yes. in terms of the children in incubation, um, how does that work in terms of time? Do they take the same time that they would take here on Earth? No. Um, Different species have different incubation periods. Um, it is noted that there, the incubation periods are shorter with most alien species, except for Lyran and some reptilian takes longer. Okay. But, the but Lyran, Lyran gestation period was purposely extended and I will explain that in some detail later. Okay. Hello, well, uh, okay. All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Hi, Mary. Uh, hi. Mary, hello. 
Do I have any hybrid children? I don't believe I asked you before. No, you do not at this time. But I believe that you are interested in that. There is there were so many things happening with you, Mary, that they decided not to start that program with you quite yet. There was other things happening with hybridization, visitations, and movement between the colonies. But if you would like a hybrid child, it can be arranged. You just have been too active for us to actually give you that opportunity yet. Yeah, and I also, I don't, I don't know if I'm ready for the responsibility. I understand. That is not a problem, but we see that you have been thinking about it, but it has not been initiated. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, thank you. Um, Hayam has a question. Hayam. Um, yeah. Can, he wants to know if we can meet the other parents of of our hybrids. Yes. And have we already met? In some ways you have already met. And if you have not met yet, you will. Okay. And he also wants to know who's raising them. Their parents. That is why they are given extraterrestrial parents, is so that they can be raised properly and if you would like to see them and become part of them this is acceptable Max has visited Moshe many times yes because um, I think that some of us would like to be able to do that um, you will be able to and have but you may not remember it because once again you go in third dimension not in third dimension you go in <laughs> your state um, he also asks, where are they raised? It depends. Some are on ships, some are on planets, some are on planetoids. Okay, and uh, what do they do while growing up? Many things that children do, plus they are in one moment. They are subjected, I'm not sure if that is the right word, to human childhood as well. Since they are part human, we have intended that they learn how to be human in some ways as a child, even though they progress much faster than human children we still give them the opportunity to view videos from your world and become active in some of your games as we decipher how they are played. <laughs> uh, um, he also wanted to know how much do they grow in Earth years, but I guess that would be individual races. Yes, individual races grow at different speeds, but for the most part, and even including Liren after birth, the rate, the rate of speed which they develop intellectually, emotionally, and spiritually is much faster than those of Earthlings. Okay, thank you, Tipper. I wanted to send, um, to Masha, I wanted to send another symbol. Like that. What does that mean? Um, it's sort of a joke. It's a joke. But also, it's uh, it's uh, a loving joke. Ah. Aha, uh -huh. loving joke. All right. Mm -hmm. You are becoming more reptilian. Takar, do you have any jokes for that, us? Was that funny? Oh. Um, nope. <laughs> oh, I was trying to tell a joke, but it did not work. All right. I got it. That was there it. We, are. we got it. We got it. <laughs> Gabriel. 
what do you find funny about humans, interesting, the most? Mostly everything. There are as many things about humans that are very funny. The way you interact is funny, the way you walk is funny, the way you think is funny. There are many funny things, however, you would not find it funny, probably. The <laughs> things that we find funny, you may not find funny. So, um, do you get our jokes? We're now starting to, yes. We did not in the past. We had to learn culture before we could learn how you twist it to make it funny. And how realistic the twist is because the truth lies on both sides. Does that make sense to you? Yes. Yes. So when you talk and become a comedian or funny, you tell the truth as well as a lie. Correct. Or exaggerate the truth also. Yeah. Which is a lie. Correct. But that is how we perceive it. However, we are now starting to understand why it's funny. As I said, uh, for everyone, alien and hybrid who goes down on the ground, I recommend a test to watch Yes Minister and Yes Prime Minister. So they have to understand at least 90% of the jokes there to, to be qualified to work on the ground. Yes. And you have to understand occupations also to understand your jokes. Yes, yes. Yes. <laughs> and what machinery does that and what it is purposed for to understand your jokes. So it took much time for us to interpret some of your jokes, such as when rabbis and priests and things go into establishments. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. We found that funny. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. You found it funny and I didn't even tell a joke. So. No, funny was how it is hard for you to get. Yes. I understand that. You would seem funny, yes. <laughs> what would be, uh, so Lirans also have humor, right? What would be your typical ways of delivering jokes and having laughter? Well, we have a, we are a different physiology than you are and have a different culture, and so our jokes would make Perhaps a furball joke would be the closest we could come. Furball? A furball. Cats spit up furballs. Our ancestors were cats. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. Yes. And so every now and then a joke will come along. He mm. was so not intelligent that he probably still spits furballs. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand? More or less. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> I do. Pardon, pardon me. Um, I've been raising my hand, but I just have this feeling of, of this idea that there's a blockage um, from this idea, and it's being <clears throat> confirmed from a couple other people. It's just an idea that's being felt, and I'm just addressing it. That's it. Yes. But um, I have this other idea that I was just feeling lately. Um, it's a it's a positive idea um, in regards to hybrids and and aspects of hybrids. Um, uh, we were told that the hybrid um, program has been slowed down or halted. So the idea that this energy um, led from led to me was to um, be open to this idea of inviting and offering the allowance of the um, DNA light codes from uh, other universal beings, if you will, and then integrating and processing, embodying, after introducing part of our individual DNA light code 
and then putting our excitement and our unconditional love and, and infinite gratitude and infinite appreciation and for the manifestation of this. I've been feeling this strongly and experimenting and exploring this and I have been feeling confirmations for myself um, in and of this. Um, I was just, I'm just, I guess I'm just sharing the idea in this moment. Um, I've had confirmations for myself. The um, hybrid program is still continuing, but it okay. has changed. It is no longer a hybrid program without your permission. It is uh, now a hybrid program with your permission. Hmm. That is a huge change within the hybridization program. Yes, and I understood what you were saying about moving it forward, and I appreciate your positive attitude toward that. And yes, we will continue. If you would like hybridization, this is something that we will speak to you personally about. Yes. Um, it was just more for confirmation of the idea that I've been receiving in the um, invitation to the offers of um, integrating uh, aspects of my DNA light code with aspects of um, offered DNA light code from other uh, universal entities or universal beings yes. for the manifestation for the exploration of a new aspect for myself. Exactly. You are going outside the Grokfrick Near program, which is fine. Okay. Talking about jokes, um, there is a study of uh, laughter in rats, and apparently they laugh too. And um, when they laugh, they demonstrate that they are just playing. They are not fighting for real. They are just playing. That's the sound they make when they <coughs> adolescent rats when they fight. They make laughter, indicating that it's not for real. Don't be offended. It's just a game. And in humans, it's pretty much so as well. Especially in California, people when meet each other, meet, meet each other eyes, they smile, which means I'm not threatening to you. I am positive to you. In Russia, in China, for example, if people just strangers would smile to each other, it would be very strange because they would show that they are weaker than each other. And in Russia, they normally keep very serious face, meaning I'm strong, I'm protected. No, instead, but uh, in, in California, they would say, I'm not threatening. It's, it's two different messages. So, so that's one side of laughter. Yes, in different cultures, <clears throat> different greetings mean different things. Mm -hmm. In the European cultures, in some of them, being very stoic is a means of meeting others because they do not want anyone to know who they really are until they know who they really are. Uh -huh. And therefore, these kinds of communications and customs on Earth vary quite vastly from continent to continent, from country to country. But I understand where you are coming from, and it would be acceptable and enlightening for earthlings to smile at one another for confirmation of friendliness. Yeah, also in totalitarian culture there is very aggressive laughter, meaning I am in control, I am the boss. Yes. Uh, I just wonder if other cultures also express laughter by ha ha ha, by uh, repeating sound? Yes. So it's universal. Repeating sound, I think I believe I know what you mean. Do you mean like flatulence? I don't know what it is. Flatulence, that is the word I know. What is Jim's word? Oh. A fart. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny to some people, but not to all. No, I'm asking about like Liran, would you laugh by repeating sound ha ha ha? Or your laughter is different? Oh yes. That is I thought you were meaning that there were funny sounds. No, no. Like Pleiadians, yes, Lirons. We laugh as you do. Uh-huh. In many ways. 
Some it is a little quieter at times and a little louder at other times. But we do laugh. It may not sound like your laughter. It may be more of a meow or screech, but yet <laughs> it is laughter. How far into the evolution it goes? Like reptilians, would they laugh also like the same way we do? They do not we do not all laugh the same way, but we do all have a form of laughter. No, I was asking about reptilians. Reptilians snort. Snort? <laughs> oh, it's laughter? Yes. <laughs> oh, I laugh like a reptilian. That's why I said that. <laughs> You'll become more reptilian. <laughs> um, Max, Zenaida has a question, if I oh, may. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Zenaida. She says she has a bean with her right now, and yeah. she's trying to figure out if it's Shakani or Syrian. Both are very high, fifth dimensional almost. It would be hard to tell them apart. I can understand her dismay. But it is Shakani. Okay. Dick. Do you have a name? She would like to know a name, if it's possible. One moment. They will have to tell me. Okay. Glurk. Glurk. Okay, I will pass the information. Thank you. Uh, there was a, a rumor that there are troubles of error. Uh, do, do you have any comment on that? There are always rumors. Era is not as bad off as you think. Uh -huh. There is a portion of Era that is going through many wars and hassles. You call them hassles. Okay. But they are not, they are in an area that is shut off from the rest of the planet. Oh. So they are not affecting 86% of the planet. Also, we invited Pleiadians to speak, and they said that soon their period of silence is ending. Is it already over? It is ended already, yes. Oh, so we invite them to speak whenever. It's good for them. Actually, Tepe has been talking to people on private sessions already. Hooray, we invite them to speak. Um, in, a, in a previous week ago in a previous webinar, I suggested I invited people from uh, the de alien department of ground operations, you know, like pub uh, public relations people from alien department of ground operations to speak to us, to describe more of what is happening um, with um, Gorkfitnir and other galactic ground operations on Earth. And I was sort of uh, the response from my friends was that this is so sensitive that I shouldn't even touch that area. So I just, you know, if you think that it's overly sensitive, uh, just say so. There are several different answers coming to me from different places. Thank you. But your Octorian answer is denied. There are too many things that could slip out that cannot be known yet. But in a few weeks, they will define the program that can be spoken of. Wonderful. That was my proposal. Thank you. I cannot stay any longer. Thank you very much for your presence and answers and communication and the jokes. I am sorry that I was not funny. Uh, you can give us blessing on the exit if you like. I will. Dear Mom Waka Shah, when the Kawa Kawashin da Kian Yemwa, Wuta to Kora Koshoto Yakata Sashanta Pata Tukara Tokashu. as it is that the universe continues to expand so let us continue to expand together in our thought processes our wants and needs and friendships and loves 
Take heart that you are not alone even when you feel alone. Take heart that you are part of a greater thing that must come about. Take your reasoning and build a world, a universe, and a time for peace and unity. Bless you all in the love that you share, in the light that you shed. Thank you much. Thank you, Takara. Thank you. Namaste. Hello. Hey, Jim. Welcome <laughs> back. Ooh. I need to go get some water. Oh, we're already close to finishing. Yeah, go ahead. I have to go. You want me to bring the water? I can. Uh, you want to put it in there? That'd all be right. fine. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, how are you all doing? How are you all doing? Great. How are you? Good. <laughs> I'm not good. I'm just thirsty as usual. So. <laughs> I think her was that there was for amazing. a while. Yes, she she was here for yeah. a while. Wow. Yeah, she doesn't usually stay I was, that long. Yeah, I know. I was sending energy the whole time was, to her. I was, oh, I, was I wanted I wanted the connection to last. I felt everyone really had like a lot of con like questions. So the whole time I'm just sitting here. Yeah. Thank like you. I felt. I felt to her like compelling me to do different like dances and different vocalizations like in my in my head and in my heart and I just imagine building a a vortex from me through the phone to you and to to her and to keep on providing energies for it. Well, you know what? That's probably why she lasted so long because I don't think she's ever been here that long, is she? Yeah, it was pretty long, much longer than usual. She was here much longer than usual, and she. <coughs> Uh, she was in a really good mood. I could tell that she was in a really yeah, good mood. Yeah. Yes. She yes. was very, uh, very happy. She told a joke and Max didn't get it. <laughs> Can you explain to me? She told a couple jokes which I didn't get. <laughs> One is about reptilian and second about the furball. I I understand, you know, 50, 60 percent, but not to the way I laugh. What was the joke? <laughs> um, Max said something and she said, you are becoming more reptilian, or something like that, and Max didn't get it. But you did. It's because his laugh was because Takur said that reptilians snort when they laugh, and then Max is like, "Oh yeah, I snort," and then he was like, "Oh yeah, you're becoming more reptilian." Yeah, you especially when I was the child, I always laughed to the reptilian way, and I was surprised that people laugh any any differently. Yes. <laughs> I guess it goes in my family. It goes like. <laughs> So you got it now, Max. You know yeah. now. You got understood now. But what was the furball joke? Um, it was like you're so it. unintelligent that you still cough up furballs or something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so in there, so you're saying that they don't cough up furballs anymore. Yeah, because back then the ancient Lyrians did, or something. Oh, maybe, maybe, oh. maybe, maybe they, they were, were more cat-like. So fur bulbs. They were more cat-like. They were literally, they had like cat heads, I guess, or they were cats. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, so cats cough up fur bulbs. What she said, I did. <laughs> like they were so stupid, they still can't. Yes. Yeah. The, the past, they're so stupid. They're like people from the past. Oh. They're like cavemen. Like get the, it. Get it. Like that, you know? All right. You get so it now, Max. Okay, now I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're so dumb. They still. Yes. 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 Like, yes. Yes. Like, yes. like we would say, they're so dumb. They're like a caveman or something. Yeah. 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 But why? <laughs> well, uh, 
What does it mean cough up? Cough out? Yeah. Yes. Up Why? Verbal, because cats do that. I didn't they know. lick themselves so much. The oh, finally! <laughs> so carefully lick themselves and you get the fur. And I never saw that. I didn't. I wasn't aware of it. Yes. <laughs> off of fur balls, and that's what Chakur was talking about, I think. How would you translate it into human experience? You're it so ancient that you what? You were so dumb. You act like a caveman or something. Yeah. yeah. What did Kevin? So dumb. You still use a wooden club, or I don't know where. Uh, <laughs> You're so dumb. You don't know what a wheel is. In in, in <laughs> Russian, we say. How about how about not the sharpest tool in the shed? Yes, yeah, that's the big <laughs> what she's. Yeah. You're not the sharpest tool in the oh. shed. In, in Russia, we say, uh, uh, ask a a dummy to pray, and he will. Uh, Crack his uh, forehead. Ask a what? A dummy to to pray, and he will crack his forehead. I don't get that either. A dummy, ask a stupid person to pray. Oh, okay. And so, he will uh, okay. uh, damage his forehead. His damage. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, it translates differently to every culture. So yes. Her yeah. joke was as close to what she could think of for. Us as possible, I guess. Well, well I mama, got it. Yeah. Mama is pretty universal. Mama, like, your mama's so fat, like, that's that's kind of yeah. universal. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, there's some things that are kind of universal. Yeah, really. <laughs> okay. So, um, did she give a lot of good stuff? Yes. Beautiful. Yes. yes. Uh, amazing confirmation. <laughs> oh, she's always giving a lot of confirmations to <laughs> They yeah. a lot of confirmations. Even before they mention what the confirmation is, sometimes you'll give them a confirmation. Oh, so, well, that's a great confirmation. Yeah, <laughs> that's so. that's the that others were. I was definitely feeling confirmations in relation to um, questions I put out there, meditations I put out. So it's really yeah. neat. That, you know, a, like a message could have different that triggered different confirmations for different people, you know, and, exactly. and it's, it's really, I felt I felt as if Takur was was connecting telepathically with um, the higher selves of us, of us all, and then just kind of was mixing her messages so that it would if if you were open to different energies and keywords or ideas, it would it would trigger it and. I would just feel these energies or these ideas and just let it flow in the moment and then it's like, oh, okay, this is something that triggered a confirmation. What a great observation that is because, you know, one, you just said that and it became very apparent to me that she reaches everyone on their own level, which is exactly right. She opens their consciousness to her consciousness to their level and their consciousness to her level. So that's actually very accurate. I also notice that they speak differently to different people while they talk privately. Yes, she, so she, she, she can move and talk to people in different ways. Isn't that wild? I just, she's amazing. So, Can you see my yes. screen now? Yes, we can see your screen. All right. Uh, that is a... Uh, uh, a post on on a website. It's called Saturday morning, September six. I don't know where it is. It's right here on the right. If you can see, if you scroll down to recent posts on the right, uh, it is an invitation. It starts. The event starts 10 a.m. Pacific time, which is um, uh, one and a half hour from now, and it is um, Winfrey and Carla Ruckert. And I really love Carla Rooker. She is a channeler who channeled about um, 50 years ago or 40 years ago. And she channeled uh, the law, law, law of one raw material, I believe. Raw, right, you said? Yeah. yeah raw, raw material, yeah. yes. Dude, it's awesome that you did this. This is so synchronistic. Yesterday, Sarah, Brian, Wendy, and I were all in a hangout. And we all just started doing these uh, vocalizations, and as we we're doing these vocalizations, um, <laughs> it pretty much 
Raw came through um, to deliver a message um, <clears throat> for for us um, through myself, for Sarah, Wendy, Brian. Sean was there. Pardon me, I forgot Sean. Um, <clears throat> so really confirming of this experience yesterday. Wow. Uh, yeah, Thoth, Thoth had came had come through recently. Horus, Osiris. Um, I haven't made a connection with Newt or the other two siblings yet. Um, Gaia had also come through for a message for Wendy, Brian, Sarah, Sean, and I um, as well. It was a it was a very exciting, very exciting morning uh, yesterday, and just a confirmation that going um, through, man. I have a very strong connection to Anubis, so if he comes through, let me know. So. Yeah. I have a very strong correct to set an Anubis. Can you tell a little more about them? Um, <coughs> I went. I didn't. I haven't really talked to anybody about this, but uh, except for maybe one person. But I had a dream that I was Anubis. Oh. In a past life. Who is that? Uh, it's Anubis an Egyptian a, god. It's an Egyptian god who takes the souls across the river and weighs them for their good and evil content and then sends them into light or dark energy. And um, his father is Set, who was the god of chaos and the desert. And um, but that was and storms as well. So, but that wasn't necessarily a negative title, but, mm -hmm. uh, because chaos is not necessarily negative. <laughs> it's confusing, but it is not <laughs> negative. <laughs> so Anubis was his child. So, and he looked. He had a different. He was an alien, basically. Oh, really? They were just aliens, and they were considered gods, but they really weren't gods. They were just aliens. So. If you, I feel a very strong contact to that, and and uh, Horus and all those uh, entities from back then. So, yes, it's been developing very strongly lately. Um, just, they're coming just back, I think. They're they're coming back in a different way. So, but it's, what, it's well, like, well, 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 I was I was told that I was Anubis, and I'm going. Well, that's an alien well, that was on the Earth. So. My I'm yeah, sure. well, my my idea and and that I've had is that, and with the message that came through is just that we are individually um, the alpha and omega of our own universes. Our own universes are our bodies, and our bodies, you know, reside on <clears throat> on a, on the fabric which I consider, you know, the fabric of the universe, and <clears throat> our higher self projects our holographic image to where it's desired. Um, and this, this is just kind of just is that a new as I'm it, but it's kind of along from there. Um, Hope you look like an alien. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I hear you. He is a picture of, he's putting up pictures of uh, Egyptian culture and uh, deities right now. So Do you see that? Yes. A new there he is weighing the hearts. Oh. The scale is to weigh the hearts of the pharaohs. Ah. Uh -huh. Ah. Uh -huh. So that's what was your job some time I ago? I took them I took them from their death across to the next life. To make sure that they were going to the right place. Uh-huh. That was my job. I had several <clears throat> jobs, actually. Oh, you have to go. Yes, that's the feeling I get too, Jim. I get the feeling that, um, yes, it's, it's it's more than just one. And if you're interested um, in exploring this uh, together, yeah. I feel like maybe this was this was meant to be brought up. Yes, Anubis was. I I know some things about him. Uh, some see he channels at for terminating for the terminally ill, because he was the god of death, pretty much. Um, that's what his title was, because he took the pharaohs, especially, to the other side and weighed their hearts 
for darkness and light and sent them to the right energy. So he's Nubian. Yes. Nubian. Yes. What is Nubian? Nubian is a, is a dog, humanoid-like, humanoid dog-like uh, entity. Oh. Um, I just, I just he looks yeah. like a dog. He has more of a dog, sort of a long snout, almost reptilian looking. Mm. You can see that, but the ears are very, very big. So it's more like canine looking, Anubis looking, canine looking back then. Unless that was just a mask. That I haven't been told. No, I feel I feel the canines definitely have something to do with the Egyptian times because that's how I found out about Nitrus's wife. She had something to do with the, the Egyptian era in general. And I feel like um, maybe at some point their species came there for a, a reason. Mm -hmm. A really good reason. Um, but... Let me tell you something interesting. In that lifetime, I was alien. But in this lifetime, I have no alien in me whatsoever. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Uh, because I asked, and they said, you don't have any hybrid. You're not alien at all. You are a special human, and we'll explain that to you later. You, but, but you have reptilian DNA now, so... Well, 0.7%, yes. <laughs> Well, there's only like one percent difference between us and chimpanzees. Isn't right. look how much. Well, this is different percentages. These are not the same scale. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. Exactly. Um, the thing is, I I talked to Takur Jim. about getting Lirin and stuff like that, and they asked me. They said they would do it if I wanted, but they would prefer that I did it. And the reptilian, they wish that I wouldn't have even got the 7.7% 7 .7 reptilian, but so they asked me to remain purely human. So that is something that um, I only have the 0.7% reptilian, and they asked me to remain untouched otherwise. Hmm. Now, why do you think that is that they. I do not know. They yeah, but yes. They put it on some and one other. So. Uh, I didn't hear that. Two people were talking at once. What? I feel you have oh, ideas. Um, why do you? <laughs> Sabrina first. <laughs> Sabrina, please repeat. Yes, we didn't. You talked at the same time again. <laughs> Sabrina. Can you Yes? Yeah. I said, what, why do you think that is that they, um, they wanted you to re remain pure? I don't know. They won't tell me yet. Alien. You're going in and out. Okay. So I can't yeah, hear. Sabrina. I can't. I, I think I understood what you said, but uh, they won't tell me why. I, they want me to remain pure. In fact, they're trying to get rid of the 0.7% reptilian. Get rid of. Yeah, get it out. They want it out. Uh -huh. And they it can't be reversed, according to the reptilians. But Gurk Fignir said that um, I can uh, that amount I can maybe assimilate and get get it totally out of my system. So we'll All see. Right. That's an idea right there. Uh, maybe maybe explore this idea with excitement and just strong assertive in, intent so you know you can meet them halfway to vibrate that 0.7 percent out just just an idea that I was feeling in the moment when you expressed it mm -hmm. good hey I have a question for you Justin who is that picture that you show in the middle there that is myself um, with the hat on and that's my father we were that's when I went to Texas and we were in Corpus Christi that's uh. Very cool. Okay, I get it now. Okay, very good. <laughs> that's that's that that's that's much that that's who's been you know with me each step of the way, and you know now. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. So I. I'm good. All right, so uh, Jim is available for private sessions. Uh, you find his phone number in Skype.
on the left of the humancolony.org, uh, there is a gym menu there, and the gym's page has all the numbers. Uh, contact him to reserve uh, private sessions. You can ask lots more questions. And now we can speak to Pleiadians. Hooray! <laughs> Tepe uh, is very knowledgeable in, about medicine, including human medicine and other Pleiadians. He just spoke to people yesterday about medical things. Uh-huh. He spoke to somebody yesterday about medical things. He speaks to several people about medical things, but he's still unsure of the human body 100%. So some of his uh, things work, but they don't work as well as he'd like them to. Um, mm. Like, oh, I'll give you an example. Someone from another state that had migraine headaches, there a lot of them and consistently, he was able to move them out of migraine headaches into just mild headaches. Using his technology or yes. just advice? No, using his technology. Yeah, they can access but, tran transdimensionally. People. But so far he hasn't been able to rid her completely of headaches, but they have diminished in such a way that they are very, very, very s small now compared to what they were. Another person had some intestinal problems, and he diagnosed it, and now that is gone. And one of the somebody had a pineal problem. They they had a implant at the top of their at the top of their mouth, and it was in fact affecting their pineal gland. And he took care of that. Uh, it's Jim, just, you sent him. You sent him to help my cousin for that in that car accident. My cousin seriously, okay. like, he was scalped. Like the the skin on the top of his head was completely peeled back, and he had a skull fracture, and they had to put a drainage to him for for that. And I know the medical, bo I know medical stuff and healing pretty well. Being a massage therapist, I started studying sports medicine. <clears throat> All the, I broke my back twice, nine car accidents, tons of physical therapy. Right. Um, there's no way my cousin should have walked out of there a week later, like literally walked out. Yes, um, he was given a lot of help from Tepet as well. Yes, yes. Yeah, because he asked for it in Tepet. Tepet went to his room. I he, told me, he, told me to kiss, he told me to kiss his heart. I was doing Reiki. I brought a bunch of stuff. I brought a bunch of high vibrational crystals with me. And I just was the whole way just strong, excite, calm excitement and desire for you know, channeling the prayers and energies to him, and and as I was doing that, and I got a moment to myself with him, I just with my dad, and I felt safe with him, and just all right before you leave, you know, just you know, give him a kiss where his heart is, and and you know, make the connection with it, so it will continuously flow, and just come each day, and make sure you can come make a connection with him, and do some type of reiki, and we'll help you with the with with this. And Tepe made a personal visit there, at least twice. So he did help. He told, I think he told you that as well. Yes, yes. And um, he recovered, his recovery after that was really fast. He had an incredibly fast recovery from his injuries. Did he not? Yeah, there's no way he should have walked out of that. Literally walked out of the hospital a week later. I mean... A skull fracture, um, the the skin on the top of his head. <laughs> it was like an Indian, Native American back in the day, like when they would scalp someone. Like it was just barely hanging on. They had to stape and stitch it. Broken ribs, cracked nose. Like he was busted pretty bad and walked out of there. You know, it was it literally. You know, it was with the miracle. Yes, I mean there was. Your, your help, you helped as well with your Reiki and crystals. That, well, that was a huge help as well because the energy was amplified by Tepe put amplification into those and um, now they continue to be amplified. They, they haven't lost their power that he gave them. Oh, no, I feel it and what I do is I purify them with salt. I actually brought Corpus Christi um, water back with me and I just use that with other salt water pur or purified water to, you know, wash my body with every once in a while to wash my stones to purify them while keeping the high vibrational energies in them and recording them if you will and just amazing amazing crystal work lately right and uh, he's helped other people with small things and um, 
they've all there's always been some kind of good result from it yes it may not be totally healed but the result has been always good dramatic I mean I, I literally literally a miracle I know it was a miracle it, that's that's a strong feeling and knowing this yes I agree thank you again for helping with that too oh no problem and now we start her up wrapping up with blessings I will uh, start and whoever wants to join with the blessings after that please go ahead so uh, now is a time of transformation you can feel the magic in the air things are changing fast and things are changing in a very new way in a very magic way you can see miracles happening some of that is homemade technology miracles and some of that is Angelic, some of that is absolutely supernatural. I don't even know who to assign that magic. I think all energies involved for that transformation. Invite that. Invite the transformation. Welcome the magic. Welcome the healing. Um, initiate healing. Um, welcome healer inside you. Use your energy healing power. Become a healer. Welcome your healer personality, your healer self within you. That is one of the most easy paths and most welcome paths to transform the world through healing. Invite a child in you welcome a child self of yourself plain energies are also very healing and helpful and creative are also healing and helpful you have to be successful you can choose to be successful you ought to redefine success but success is that what you're coming for in this life. Be successful in a new way. Fall is starting, leaves are falling, uh, cold and darkness are coming, but they are coming in a magic way and are bringing new energies and new magic for transformation. So they take it as natural taken as something which has to come and welcome it and use it for positive transformation Tim you want to continue? Do you want me to Rotata sata pora rotato kuro to sibata sei kakarata to turto abati Ururuto, sututuri atakakato, furuto, toso sotoko, aya, aya koya, tiara rapototo, fototo kati, yeah, Tariatana na kia koskoto rono no koskoto ko alakata. Tariana na kio koskoto ana na me ki aliakata ka. Shokoto ko la aniaka a ki alakato koski alana na ka. Te yo sakata na na ka ko alakati a koto koshi akata. Tariana na ka skolo ku kalakiana na kio koto koko. Toru ala ki a kia to kolo koskata na na kia shiaka. Tario aliakata kashi. Teriyono no sokwa, Taria, Taliana na kias kotoru alaka, Teriyono no shiala, Taraka tu alaka skatati olokoshi, Tarakania kolokwa sakatia, Sarakiana na kwaski alaka tu asaka, Tariana, Turu asaka, Turuana si aleaki, Turuana kaski alaka tiakwa, Turuana saka. Transcend yourself. Your body is but air. Your mind is but a trail of energy. 
transcend your thoughts and who you are and become the spirit that you were born to be. You are not but a great thing until that greatness is shown through your humility, is shown through your artistic anomalies, is shown through who you were in many of your lives and has come together to bring your chakras into a brighter era of light. I speak in a spiritual way to you to bring you into the physical without being touched, without being physical and without being alone. You are with many thoughts and beings and truly you are a path within yourself. Your universe stretches out to universes unknown and yet when you feel yourself becoming low you are certainly not in the realms of the spirit that you were born to be. But enhance it all. Be enhanced. Transcend all that is you. And then all that is you will become more potent. Your life, your mind, your existence will become vital and the things that are important to you will be important to the mo many not to just one and even your body will be used for joy and pleasure and it will mean something different in this time because you are transcended you are brought out you are not as you think you are, but as you will be in the light and in the exposition of the Spirit. Bring forth that which is inside and make it a third dimensional Spirit as well as a seventh dimensional Spirit. And I will connect with you in your life through the domination of the Spirit. Whoa. 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 Hi, man. Whoa. Who is that? That felt like Jesus. That felt like consciousness to me. That was, I was up there on the ceiling doing that. They just dragged me up. <laughs> so what was that? Were you translating? Were you? Or yeah, that was a translation of the, the, your, mine and then yours. But they went together. Oh, so oh wow. And then yours. But it was about transcendence. Yes. yes. Wow. Wonderful. It was a crowning achievement, yes. JC, go ahead if you want to say something, go ahead. Well, that was just, I have, my flesh is still goose bumpily. Uh huh. I feel JC wants to give his blessing. Yes, go ahead. Sarah, if you're open to the idea and still there, I'm feeling some vocalizations from my friends, if uh, you would care to join me. If Sarah's still here, I wasn't sure she is. Uh-huh. Your icon is here. I am. It's a bit low.
infinite blessings to be with our Yorkamari family. Namaste. 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 Have a great day, everybody. Thank you very much for being here, and we love you very much. Um, that comes from my heart, <coughs> and I feel much love from you as well. So, thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Jim. Thanks, much Jim. love to you, Jim. We love you too. <laughs> Max and everybody <laughs> who was present today. Yes. Thank you, Max and Jim. Hey, Max. Let's watch Max's presentation. Uh, he has a presentation. Did you put it on? Everybody received the letter. Okay. okay. Yeah, go ahead. Check, check. I will send it again when I have a next version. It's an excellent presentation. Right. It's interesting to watch, and I think it's very enlightening. Thank you very much, Max. It's excellent. Thank you. So an hour from yeah. now, Carla Ruckert and her friend having the uh, show. You can call in uh, in on the Pacific. Um, just go to the website um, posts. Uh, Morning Saturday, it's called Saturday morning, and raw material channeler will be speaking. Um, mu musical um, donations are welcome for the musical project of John Lennon. Click on that Lennon link. Um, help us with the drums uh, track. Yes, drums are very important right now, but he's also, I'm also writing bass lines right now, so. Uh, drums are important to go with the bass line. John has explained to me that the drummer and the bass must be totally in sync. So I'm sure most of you, and, uh, most of you music people, understand that. Everything else can drift away in its own way, but the drum and the bass must be in sync. And Wednesday, we have uh, Sabrina has a welcome team uh, hangout. And we have a hangout tomorrow at uh, 3 o'clock for the language gym. The language gym at 3 o'clock tomorrow. And now I go camping. And I will not be able to sing, but normally I would be singing, but now I lost my voice. So my wife will be singing, I'll be playing guitar. <laughs> All right. Are you going camping? <laughs> yeah, right now, yes. Okay. Have fun. Okay. Have fun, Max. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Max. Yes. Thank you.